Welcome everyone, this is the release presentation video for curl 8.10.1 today on September 18. I am Daniel Stenberg, I'm the lead developer of curl, um, I work for WSSL, that's my site, that's my Mastodon account, blah blah blah, that's the workplace I'm sitting at right now doing this presentation. And today I will talk to you about release 261. Uh, yes, we've done a few of these by now, but we still need to do more, right? So this time around, we had the help of 19 contributors and 9 authors, and um, quite a few. Thank you, everyone. And um, of course, this is just 7 days since the previous release, which makes it 9,679 days since we started doing curl releases. And uh, this time around, I hope that this won't be too lengthy because we only did 24 bug fixes in this release since yeah it's only been a week since the previous one and really what made us what pushed me to do this um, release this time is actually the the number of regressions that we <laughs> managed to insert in this particular uh, in the previous release and you would then might maybe be a little bit curious how come we do regressions like this uh, some of them pretty annoying even and that's of course because we do changes we do fixes we do improvements all the time and while we have a lot of test cases we apparently don't have enough test cases and there i mean you can use curl in so many different ways and combinations that it's quite impossible to have all those combinations in test cases as well as in the same variety and, and plethora as all the applications that are using curl so yes uh, regressions still happen even though this is released 261 and we've done this a few times and so yeah unfortunate but um, reality and we all have learned that we don't really get to know about the regressions until we do the release so we have to do the release to find out the problems fix the regressions and iterate over and over and this is not going to be the the last regressions we ever did anyway either so we'll just continue doing this we do as best as we can so this time i'm going to mention uh, the my favorite 15 bug fixes really and let's start out with some of the script things that we fixed the uh, config this is a new feature we introduced in the previous release the dash dash with ca embed when you build with well that's a configure option so you can build with curl so that it actually embeds this uh, ca store into the curl tool when you build the curl tool and it has some flaws that it could actually end up just bundling a blank uh, ca store instead of the actual ca store better now uh, we also fixed uh, another c make problem when you when you wanted to build uh, with the open ssl quick backend we made the msh h3 appear correctly in the feature list when you build with cmake and we now make sure that when you run tests after you build curl with the quick tls open ssl fork it's actually treated as open ssl so it'll run more tests and than it did before because it accidentally didn't uh, consider it open ssl well it technically is an open ssl but it's an open ssl fork and in the library we fixed so that we we had some issues that we sometimes didn't store the connection info correctly due to the happy eyeballs um, funny interactions we introduced a, inter a curious uh, regression when it comes to uh, CR crlf line endings in ftp basically when usually when th this happened when you did uh, perhaps a um, directory listing over FTP and curl would then suddenly no longer uh, properly convert those CRLF to just LF on systems that don't normally have CRLF line endings like everything except Windows uh, it should be back to correct now um, we had a problem with HTTP2 uploads from standard in um, because we didn't properly handle that end of stream thing and uh, we fixed a problem this was not actually a regression because this bug has been there for a long time but anyway when you set the dash dash max file size option with curl it means never download more than this many bytes uh, and that 
accidentally also included a, a byte counter for for the initial body when you would have done a redirect. So maybe if you would download, for example, a URL and that URL would redirect you to another URL. And that first page could have a small body with data and curl typically then ignore that, ignores it and moves on to the actual download. But it would include that in the count that could then abort due to max file size. Complicated explanation, but uh, should be fixed now. Another build problem when we accidentally used IPv6 symbols outside of if that's correctly. So if you on systems without IPv6 support, it could break the build. And a, a few more in the library then. Um, it, uh, this is not really a bug fix in libcurl, but due to some minor changes in behavior in, in the API, I would say that it's still within how it's documented to work, but still it the previous version still changed some some nature of internals that made perhaps libcurl act slightly differently than before and that surprised some users of libcurl and in one particular case that led to them using curl multi assign this function with a null pointer argument and basically yeah and and curl crashed on that and we don't have to do that we could just check that the input uh, handle is seems okay before we use it and just uh, you know return a failure if it isn't so that's what we do now so while well, strictly not a, a curl problem we made curl a little bit more resilient to that because we typically do that in a lot of other functions anyway so we could just as well do it here too we fixed uh, some minor issues in quick connects we uh, fixed this is this is a problem that uh, git users might have uh, figured out so when you did git push over https curl would actually sometimes end up in a problem because it wouldn't uh, it git then internally makes a multiple series of http operations or requests and due to the nature of them uh, it would then exploit a a bug in curl where we wouldn't reset the end of stream flag correctly. Now we do, and now we have test cases for it. We um, fixed another problem, which was an interesting thing. So we, due to a little optimization, we would end up in a busy loop that never ended if we if users skipped polling for for um, activity on sockets file descriptors before they would do sort of ask curl to um, perform again a complicated issue but it, and, and and in this case this mostly is visible with php programs because apparently php programs do this uh, too often a lot or sometimes at least <clears throat> we fixed uh, other things in the russell's backend so now you can set the cipher the selection correctly and uh, we also address the actually I think it's the last TLS related uh, uh, random number generator uh, issue maybe, maybe not issue but now in every every time you build curl with TLS support we now use the TLS libraries uh, random number generator functions so that they will be cryptographically strong meaning that we get better random in curl so those things in curl that needs random mostly authentication methods they now they perform better previously up until this point in time uh, sometimes when you would build with russells we wouldn't have uh, a strong random and that was unfortunate but now that is fixed russell support is still marked experimental just remember that and that was basically the the some of the most important bug fixes we landed a few more uh, go read the full change log for for the full set we have s these pending removals they are mentioned in the release notes and i'll mention them again because in february 2025 uh, not too far away from today we're going to remove support for the hyper backend and uh, we currently support it for http 1 if you build it like that it's still experimental in curl and uh, apparently it'll never go away from experimental it's now queued up for 
removal in 2025 unless someone shouts really loud and makes something about it. And we're also going to remove support for non-TLS 1.3 capable libraries in May 2025. So bare SSL and secure transport are sort of marked for pending removal if nothing happens until May 2025. Just be aware, maybe you want to, if you're a user of any of these, maybe you need to start thinking about transitioning away or upping up your efforts to fix them. So the next release is likely to be 8.11.0 and if things go well then it will happen in about seven weeks because now we have sort of nudged off a week from the release cycle. And possibly coming in that release include things like TLS 1.3 early data. I'm not sure it's mature enough to actually get uh, merged and, and shipped in this release, but there is uh, active work on this feature. So maybe, maybe there's an, uh, another PR for an option to disable WebSocket Autopong, which is the feature uh, WebSocket, the protocol has this ping pong feature or property where, where one of the ends sends a ping and the other end sends back a pong. And in libcurl we have an auto pong. So it always sends back an auto pong automatically when it receives a ping from the server. And now there's an option proposed to disable that auto pong. And then the user would have to pong itself when the server sends a ping. Maybe. And we are on schedule to remove WebSocket from the experimental list and move it uh, into the regular supported uh, protocol list. So this is bound to happen uh, because it's been, it's been two years since we introduced WebSocket. It seems to work. We have users reporting that it, uh, it's decent. So I think it's, it's about time to remove the experimental tag, ship it for real and, you know, see how it runs in the real world and people will try it for real and then well iterate from that i'm sure and i'm sure when we go proper a release like this people will find problems and, and there will be issues in here but this is also a little bit back to my my discussion about regressions this is how we have to do it because it won't be used enough properly widely until we actually ship it non-experimental in a release and at that point, people will start using it, figure out the problems, report them, and then we iterate. We just move on as usual, right? We have done 261 releases. We will continue do, uh, to do releases going forward as well, because that is what we do. And we have this uh, interesting PR that I, I'm not, I think it might be ready to get merged in this release cycle. It's a way to just send a part of a file in a dash dash data. And it's actually a little bit more um, features than that, but um, it allows a user to use only a, 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 well, a part of a file on disk. So if you have a huge file on disk and you just want to send, use a part of that as a, for example, in a post or something, then this feature allows you to do that. Who knows who, who, which of these that are actually going to land. There's also this ongoing effort to, to, for a, believe it or not, a fifth uh, quick backend in curl. We have four already and there's a fifth coming. And this one in, uh, then take advantage of the quick in kernel effort. The quick in kernel effort is a way to bring most of the quick support into a kernel module in a Linux kernel and if you run such a module in your kernel, you can make curl use that kernel, uh, complicated. But um, it has not been accepted into the kernel yet. And I'm not entirely sure what the status is of this right now. So it might take another loop or uh, two until we actually end up merging this. But if any of these are interesting to you, be, I mean, join in, uh, uh, make it happen, uh, review, try it out, comment, tell us how it works, tell us what doesn't work, and so on. So I also wanted to mention that I, I'm, I did a true rel release last week or whatever it was recently. I'm going to do another true rel release tomorrow. So 
if you're watching this, uh, keep up with the true real releases too. They're also um, being polished going forward. So I mentioned we plan to do the 8.11.0 release on November 5, 2024. That's seven weeks from now. Uh, let's see if we can hold that release date. I think we might, I hope, cross my fingers. The always updated every now, uh, we sync this every few days. So if you wanna check out what we have fixed and are going to ship in the pending next release, that's the URL to check out. And of course, if you wanna get support for curl for your commercial projects, get in touch because that's what I offer. And if you find any problems, go to the GitHub page, submit your issues, typos, documentation problems, misunderstandings, maybe we didn't understand something, tell us about it. If you found or suspect a security problem, report that on hackerone.com slash curl, and we offer a bug bounty if we agree and confirm that it is a security problem. We have so far paid, I think, in the range of $85,000 in, in bug bounties and counting. So there's certainly a real chance for you to earn real money if you actually find and report uh, proper security problems. And the top sponsors of Curl this month, September 2024, is this list of good friends and really it is thanks to these companies that i that that's also why i feel i want to mention and highlight them but because these are the companies that actually are providing services and finan financial support that makes it possible for curl to keep shipping keep testing keep running as we do and that's about what i wanted to tell you this fine day in September. So go to curl.se and um, I'll be back in another video, in another release, not too far away from today, I think. Bye.